A veteran of World War II tried to kiss Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky's hand during the D-Day 80th anniversary commemoration of Normandy invasion. Ukrainian president stopped the veteran and thanked him for his contribution to save Europe during the war. Zelensky arrived in France on Thursday to attend the D-Day commemorations. He is expected to meet U.S. President Joe Biden on the sidelines of the visit. Nuclear bomb proposed to be dropped on the Netherlands at Kremlin propagandists' show. Russian State Duma Deputy Andrei Gurulev suggested dropping a nuclear bomb on the Netherlands to bring Europe to its knees. Gurulev said this on air of the propaganda Russia One TV channel. According to the deputy, such an attack will be able to bring Europe to its knees because according to Gurulev, 50 to 60 percent of Europe's hydrocarbon supply is in the Netherlands. Somewhere between 50 to 60 percent of Europe's supply of hydrocarbons is in Holland. Can you imagine in Holland on the coast? The military call it a creamy target. We understand perfectly well how to inflict critically unacceptable damage to bring Europe to its knees. And it's a matter of a day, within a minimum consumption of nuclear warheads, Gurulev said. When Russian propagandist Vladimir Solovyov reiterated that the strike must be specifically nuclear, Gurulev said, it necessarily must be specifically weapons of mass destruction. I think that this determination is something we need to show, Gurulev concluded. Since invading Ukraine in 2022, President Vladimir Putin has repeatedly made veiled threats to use tactical nuclear weapons against the West. Russia has tended to raise the nuclear specter when its invasion of Ukraine has hit obstacles or when other countries make new pledges of support for Ukraine. After Ukraine liberated large swathes of its territory in late 2022, Putin conceded that the war is going to take a while and warned of the increasing threat of nuclear war. In February last year, Putin announced that Russia would suspend participation in the New START treaty, a key nuclear arms reduction agreement with the United States, the last remaining pact that regulates the world's two largest nuclear arsenals. Putin said Russia would not be the first to test nuclear weapons, but would do so in the event of a U.S. test. Russia calls U.S. an enemy for first time. Moscow's rhetoric is hardening. In a recent address to reporters, Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov referred to the United States as an enemy signaling a potential hardening of Moscow's rhetoric. It remains unclear if the use of the word signals an official policy change, as the spokesman had previously argued that only President Vladimir Putin can make such decisions. Washington's refusal to allow former U.S. Marine, U.N. weapons inspector and journalist Scott Ritter to travel to St. Petersburg was the latest manifestation of the rabid campaign to prevent U.S. citizens from interacting with the Russian Federation, which would only be understandable if it was somehow related to his former intelligence status, Peskov told journalists. We are now an enemy country for them, much like they are for us, Peskov said, while acknowledging that restrictions applying to former intelligence officers, especially on travel to a hostile country, are common across the world. The Kremlin previously called the United States and other Western countries that have supported and armed Ukraine and imposed sanctions on Moscow as unfriendly states or opponents. The shift in language 
follows Washington's decision to let Kiev use American-supplied weapons against targets inside Russia beyond what the U.S. considers Ukrainian territory. In March, Peskov noted that Moscow objects to U.S. officials who insult President Putin, but that in general there is no anti-American sentiment in Russia. He expressed hope that sooner or later the realization that the peoples of America and Russia are not enemies will eventually come. Putin said in January that the elites of Western countries were the true enemies of Russia, while Ukraine is a mere tool in their hands. The point is not that they are helping our enemy, but that they are our enemy. The Russian president said, arguing that the conflict between Moscow and Kiev was orchestrated by Western elites who seek to inflict a strategic defeat on Russia.